Well, I'm back from Iceland and ready to start the next step on this painting. When I left, I had applied a coat of resin over the painting at this point. And you can probably tell if you look closely, there are some waves and grooves in the um, layer of resin. So what I'm going to do now is a rather scary thing. That is, I'm going to take the electric sander and sand this surface down. So you're sanding right over all of the hard work that you've done up to this point, And you'll see that the painting just kind of disappears. You just have to trust the process. Spare you some of the sanding, but you, you can see where I've started sanding here, starting with 220, and it's hitting the high points. Um, the 220 sandpaper is pretty fine. I'm going to give it all a once over with that, and then I may switch to 150, which will get down a little bit deeper. Um, but I'm trying to get these bumps off the surface and and sand these grooves away. So now I've given the entire thing a once over with the 220 and you see all of the streaks in there that have to be sanded away. <clears throat> so I'm going to switch now to the 150 and sand some more. I will say that you have to be careful because if you sand all the way through the layer, then you've got to put on more of the resin. And I'm trying to avoid putting any more resin on here than I have to um, covering the painting because it yellows it and darkens it and you lose some of the color. A lot of that will come back uh, when I hit it with the um, automotive clear coat as the final step in the painting. Now I've sanded the whole thing with 150 one time. And uh, the bottom of my sanding pad is getting clogged up, so I'm going to change paper and give it another coat. You can see that there are still streaks in it, and some problem areas are developing where um, the, the sanding dust has gone down into these grooves and left these white areas. So I'm going to keep sanding and try to get rid of that. I may have to vacuum that out of there, certainly before I would do anything like put the clear coat on or even give it another um, coat of resin because that'll get locked in. I probably have mentioned before that the whole process is 10% painting and 90% sanding. Now I've sanded the whole thing three times with 150 and another time with the 220 and wipe some of the dust off. I still see a few streaks, but I'm going to go on to the next step and see what happens. The next step is to sand, sand it with wet dry sandpaper. I realize that this segment has all been about sanding, but here's some more sanding. This is a wet dry sandpaper uh, sander that is operated by air. This is with an air hose. Um, it runs for a while until my compressor goes down. But um, then you could do this all by hand, but I'd like to get started with the, with the air compressor just because it makes it easier. The wet dry sandpaper is uh, 1200 grit, and it's going to take out some of these uh, various scratches that I get from the bigger sandpaper. And it also reveals the, when I pour the water on here, it's going to sort of reveal the painting again. So there's water. Now, here we go with the wet dry sandpaper. So I've wet sanded the whole thing, dried it off with a towel. The painting has miraculously reappeared. Now I'm going to assess um, what I want to do next. Any painting that I want to do on it now, I can do with a brush, with the spray, or whatever. And the clear coat can go right over that. 
without putting more resin on. The only problem areas are right down here where I've sanded through the resin. And I don't know, I may have to deal with that in some way. I could just scrape some paint over it, like acrylic paint, let it dry and hit that with the clear coat. So the next step that you see is going to be the clear coat. Well, I've done a little extra painting on, on the piece. I think it's ready to go. I'm ready to put the um, clear coat on. This is the automatic, I mean the automotive clear coat, which will be measured into this container. Um, I'm gonna, it's pretty big, a pretty big painting, so I'm gonna fill it up to this line right here. And after that, I will pour in the activator, which goes to this line here. I'm gonna strain the whole thing through one of these strainers to make sure it's really clean. I've already cleaned out my spray gun, uh, took it all apart, cleaned it, make sure that that um, the, um, the reducer, which uh, is what I use to clean the gun with, make sure that goes through there smoothly. I found a clog in it, I had to dig that out. Um, and so I'm going to mix this up. And the final thing I'm going to do with the mixture is pour just a cap full of this reducer in there. It helps it flow better. So here we go. Well, first of all, I don't need the filter right now. I'm going to pour this in up to here. Pour the reducer in. I mean the activator, sorry, activator. That's what causes this stuff to harden. Now just a, just a little bit of the reducer. That's gonna be more than I need to do the entire painting, but I wanna make sure. Stir it up. Pour this mixture into my spray gun. And you want to make sure you get the lid on very tight. These spray guns are cheap. I don't know, I paid 30 bucks for it or something at Harbor Freight. I'm going to squirt a little bit. It comes out there. Ready to go. I'm going to be wearing a good quality respirator with carbon filters because this stuff is really dangerous. You don't want to be breathing that. I've put the uh, painting outside so I never have it spray in the house. So we're ready to go. It doesn't take very long, but here we go. We'll test it out a little bit first. There's a bug on there, you don't want anything getting. I've taken my gun all apart and um, letting it sit to dry out. Then I will uh, clean off all the parts individually before I put it lightly back together. Carried the piece carefully back into the studio and put it back on my work table. And it now has um, a very glass-like finish and it it may be done. I'm not really sure. I'll have to take a look at it, see what I think. I can always sand it down and add some more stuff to it.
it's pretty smelly so uh, what I'm going to do now is leave the studio and go play basketball and when I come back it should be dry and and the smell should be gone the painting is now finished uh, it has two coats of resin on it and I've put the clear coat on I've done all the sanding and everything now uh, the truth is what I see are still some waves in it they're going to show up when it hangs on the wall and light hits it from the top so I'm actually going to put another coat of resin on it because I uh, a thin coat because I see that um, I can see plenty of the color through there it's not darkened too much and then I will sand it again and spray the clear coat again I'm not going to subject you to all that but um, remember don't call everything finished until you think it's finished as I get a little closer you can see um, the, the painting from underneath showing through all of the uh, applications of the clear sheets of um, acrylic are covered up with the resin so it's getting rather smooth but one more coat of of um, the the polyester resin thick enough that I can sand through it um, get to get it flat without damaging the painting is how I'm going to finish this out so that's it start to finish